today we have uh, come together to celebrate the birth of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Took place uh, some 2,000 years ago. From Christmas, there are a few words that will uh, just uh, jump off. So during the during this season of our uh, effort, we will hear this word in Emmanuel. Then uh, we will we'll, uh, get a little more into the world. But there's uh, one word that we uh, don't actually uh, talk about obedience. Not even as we uh, celebrate uh, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is uh, good to uh, reflect on the obedience of uh, Joseph and uh, Mary. Now, obedience is something very, very, very difficult. Now, to obey. To obey our parents, of course, uh, when uh, they show. Yes, they can feel small, uh, no issue. Uh, no, no. You have no, no, you no choice. When uh, Papa say, sit down, but sit down. No, no. Uh, when Papa say, off the TV, but off the TV. No, no. When you are smaller. Uh, then now, uh, when you grow, uh, then you uh, live in the shallow mountain, uh, you have the front row, uh, so you ask you, uh, we are sitting down and uh, watching uh, television. And then your father walks in. And you are supposed to be preparing for your exam. And your father says, uh, please, off the television. Go into the room, take out a book and study. Uh, but now you are going to computer. How do you uh, react? How would you react to your father? So, okay. so once we uh, have a small no issue, because sometimes it's uh, purely out of uh, love, of course, sometimes it's purely out of fear of punishment. But of course, as uh, we grow up, and uh, especially if we uh, outgrow our parents, uh, when we are taller than our parents, when our parents have to look up to us, and give us instruction. Sometimes you will obey, sometimes you will, you will choose not to obey. Even though it will bring benefit to us. So that's obedience. Eh? And uh, of course as family, uh, when we are driving our cars, and we all know when the light turns red, we must, or when the light turns orange, we must slow down. It's okay. When the light turns red, you must stop. But when the light turns orange, what do you do? Press the oil, eh? hoping that you can beat that traffic light like eh? before it turns. Turn. So it's, it's a bit difficult to be obedient. Eh? It's uh, a bit difficult to be obedient. Now, well, we are the children of Adam and Eve. To our Genesis, eh? we know that Genesis chapter one, uh, chapter two, dream of our God creating the uh, the world, eh? and uh, after each day, after each day, God looked at what He created and said, "It was good. It was good. It was good." Then in uh, chapter three. Not very far. Chapter 3, we read of uh, the rebellion of uh, Eve and Adam. I won't say Adam and Eve because it was Eve who actually decided not to obey. The God had uh, placed them in this uh, beautiful garden. 
where it was full of our food trees. Full of food, food trees. So I, I guess I uh, I can't imagine that. And I'm not told uh, Adam and Eve. You can uh, enjoy the fruits from all the trees in the garden. So can you imagine that? God told it, Adam, Eve, look, this garden is before you. All the trees in the garden are before you. You just go and uh, enjoy the fruits in the garden. But, but, God told that he, Adam, he, Adam, there's one tree right in the center of the garden. I know why God planted the tree right in the center of the garden. I don't know why. He said, Adam, you must not eat the fruit from this tree. Only one tree. There were other trees, we don't know how many types of trees were there, how many types of fruit are putting trees. But God said this, just God planted one tree right in the center and said, Adam, you must not eat the fruit from this tree. God's instruction to Adam and Eve. When God gave this instruction very clear. Of course, one day uh, as they were walking, and, uh, then uh, the serpent appeared. And then the serpent uh, had to uh, eat. Uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know why the serpent decided not to tempt uh, Adam, but the serpent tempted Eve. And uh, she, this Obey God. So the first sin that came into the world was not uh, the eating of the fruit. The first sin that came into the world was disobedience. Disobedience. And uh, from the time of uh, Adam and Eve, we have been uh, rebelling against God. We have been uh, disobeying the commandments of God. Now we read in uh, chapter 6 of uh, Genesis, where the writer says, Every thought of man was only wicked. It said, Every thought of man was only wicked. And then God decided to destroy the earth. No. 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 So you ask an auntie to buy for you a children's Bible. Okay? And then you read the story. The next time when I see you, you must tell me the story. Mule. Mule, eh? Okay, if auntie don't buy, forget to buy for you, let me know. I'll buy and send it to you. Mule. So, and then, so we see the people actually disobey. And then God closed Abraham. And uh, through Abraham, he uh, raised up a nation. And then he uh, gave them the Ten Commandments and said, Keep these commandments. And what did the people of Israel do? Disobey. 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 It is always easy to disobey. Because we think by disobeying, we are going to benefit. Why do we uh, break the traffic rules? Because we think if I can beat the traffic light, I can save a few seconds, uh, a few minutes. I can be I can reach my destination fast. I, I remember a story like this. Uh, there was this uh, man who was uh, driving his car. And as you know, we all have to look at that. So the traffic light turned red, but it's the car. The car moves. 
and then the boat, it was a prize, and then a police traffic officer came out with the red flag. You see a traffic police flag in front of your car in Glory. So the policeman uh, asked him, uh, hey, how come uh, you did not stop? Did you not see the light turn uh, red? He said, yes, sir, officer. He admitted, he said, uh, yes, I saw the uh, light uh, it turned red. Then the officer said, how come you did not stop? He said, I saw the light turn red, but I did not see you in front. <laughs> so, but the officer said, it's okay, if, not, if you did not see me, but I saw you. So he gave him a sum and then. So we may be always saying that uh, by being disobedient, you'll benefit something out of it. Now that's why uh, Eve disobeyed. True enough. God said that the serpent told uh, Eve, if you eat this fruit, your eyes will be open and you will become like God. So the, 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 the serpent was saying, fine. He said that if you, if, if you disobey God, if you disobey God, you stand to benefit. You stand to benefit. You stand to gain. And so, we see what have we know what happened after that. Never since then, uh, Adam and Eve, then uh, during the time of Noah, Noah then uh, down to the, the people of Israel, we have all been uh, disobeying God. Right? Sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's to listen to sermons, it's nice to listen to sermons, it's nice to read the Bible, but then to obey society. To, uh, to obey society. I remember once I was invited there, uh, there was an artist here called Love Marriage. Uh, oh, love marriage. A lot, lot of people love marriage. Uh, so, uh, but this was a proposal, more of a proposal marriage. Uh, proposal come love marriage. So, uh, the boy was the son of my baby then. I'm talking about almost 40 years ago. Eh? Uh, only going to retire for a couple of years. So they invited me to uh, come uh, and be present during the proposal. Because both the families were from the church where I was serving. So they said, Pastor, you must come. You must come and uh, pray for us. So I spent there. And I, and uh, they did the proposal and uh, then they did the then I said they start negotiating yeah. then they came to a dowry I don't know how uh, some, some people feel like this is a dowry then uh, I was surprised because uh, I, don't, I don't agree uh, I don't agree uh, with uh, this uh, whole dowry uh, thing so I was surprised that uh, this uh, gentleman who was a lady uh, was negotiating uh, how much cash the family must give, how much gold the family must, the girl side must give. That's Indian side, Indian marriage is like that. Uh, even like that, the boy was given. And uh, uh, in uh, on the Indian side, it's the girl side who must give the boy side. So after everything, I uh, asked the, uh, my baby girl, uh, you are something that you very much older than me. Uncle, you are a baby girl. How can you go and ask that uh, girl me? He was saying, straight forward, he said, Pastor, I'm a lay leader in the church. So in the church, I will do what the Bible tells me to do. Once I'm outside the church, it's that like a, a different story yet. So a lot of us like, when we come to church, we are very obedient there. Uh, when the priest says, can the can you please stand, we stand. When the priest says, please sit down, we sit down. When the priest says, please kneel, we kneel. But once we are outside the church, do we obey the word of God? Obedience can be very, very challenging. Sometimes we may have to make sacrifices to obey what the Bible tells us to obey. And this is where I like Mary. I always like Joseph and Mary. Now, 
We only send them to this person. No, no. If we talk about that. Go to the world and talk to each other. All these guys. Think about, think about, think about the day. All these uh, songs we sing. And that's what we know now. That's uh, what actually happened. Before the birth of Jesus, what happened during the birth of Jesus? What happened after the birth of Jesus? We, for us, it is a uh, jingle bell. Uh, please, now we die. Let me, yeah, that's the Christmas. But for Joseph and Mary, it was not jingle bell, it was not flip, now we die. It was total surrender. It was total submission, obedience. Now God called appeared to um, Mary. Now Mary was just engaged there. Please, this is for you. This kind of thing is not You Mary also get involved. Huh? Who told? He says, "I reconciled." That's the word he used there. He reconciled. He go and then they ask him to go for some counseling sessions. Then he say, after that he say, "Hey, he he reconciled." Okay, shall I do that? And nobody bothers that. Like, you are know, divorced or nobody actually bothers it. But I don't bring my young days so that if you are divorced, you've got to think about it. People will not like to be unexpected. And can you imagine during the time of uh, Joseph and Mary? Now today we don't actually be, be a lot of things like to say. Nobody knows that. Good. But those of us, those of you come from a village set up, you know, everything that happens in a family is known to everyone in the village. And now, God, God sends Gabriel, angel Gabriel, to have a look for you. Luke chapter 1, then. We go back to uh, Luke chapter 1. Verse 28. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you. Greetings. You who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. <coughs> Beautiful greeting. When, we, when the, the angel of the Lord appears and says, You are highly favored. Wow. That's nice. Right? He goes on to say, Verse 7. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Wow. I'm all. Second endorsement, that uh, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. You will be with child and give birth to a son. In the couple of that, one of coming by, third, one of coming says, hey. Now, Mary was just angry. She was not even mad. And then the angel of the Lord comes and tells her, Mary, you will be, you'll conceive, you'll be with the child. That must have come as a shock to her. She must have, she, she responds by saying in verse uh, 34, How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Of course, Mary knew uh, it was not a simple thing. Eh? Those days, uh, if you are caught for committing adultery, uh, there's only one punishment there. Eh? They'll stone you to death. Full stop. No negotiation. They'll pull you, stone you to death. That was the law of Moses. So Moses, well, uh, Mary was a very religious uh, young lady. She knew the law. She may even seen uh, those committed uh, those that committed adultery stoned to them. So now she said, hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm not mad. And you are telling me that I am going to conceive. So Mary uh, says, uh, Mary asks the angel says, I am a word. And then the angel goes on and says, uh, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the most high will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So the angel explains to that thing. Like, don't worry. Don't worry. You'll conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Of course, there's a prophecy in the Old Testament of a virgin that is being held to conceive. But Mary, for Mary, it must have been that day that, no, for Mary, it must have been but for them. Conceive. How am I going to help Joseph? How are you tell him, look, I am expecting him. And Joseph will say, hey, don't go away, eh? You're not even married, you're coming and telling me you are, you are con you're conceived. Eh? Very much of God, what, what, what am I going to tell my parents? What am I going to tell my uh, in-laws? What am I going to tell the people around so all this must have quickly run through the mind of our man. But the angel says, don't worry, Mary. Don't worry. That's why it says that you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And you shall conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I like that verse 78. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. May it be to me as you have said. May Mary submit herself in obedience to the will of God. Mary said, if that is God's will, if that is God's plan for my life, I surrender myself, I submit myself, I will obey Him. And Mary totally surrendered herself. She obeyed. Of course, now, Joseph, she told Joseph eh, in Matthew, the age of uh, that encounter. In Matthew, the age, I think where you were. Matthew, the age of what? Verse 19. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her for his reason. So Joseph said, Joseph, a righteous man. Walk by the book. Eh? And then Mary comes. And the dream. And the dream, the angel appeared. What was the vision? Eh? Uh, I, the angel cut. Uh, the, angel, the angel gave it to me. Uh, and uh, the angel, uh, uh, the vision uh, told me that. Uh, and uh, I'm left a baby boy. Mary, look into my eyes. Don't say Mary, but look into his eyes. Mary, are you serious? You are telling me those days that I told you I can now. You are telling me, Mary, that you have conceived and you are trying to tell me that it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Joseph did not believe. I'm sure none of us would believe that. No, no, now we read this. Now, now, now we are reading the book. We read the gospel, so we say, yeah, wow, this is what happened. Eh? When something like that happens in our life, we will have our own questions. Eh? And then that one says, eh? But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. Verse 24. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. He obeyed. The angel said, Mary, Joseph, don't worry. He did not argue with the angel. He just obeyed because he was righteous man. Now we meet celebrate Christmas. Now this message must be heard. Mary obeyed. And surrendered her whole life. She must have had her own friends. I'm sure Mary must have had her own friends. When it comes to marriage, uh, ladies have lots of things in their mind. Uh, I do counseling uh, 
The ladies are the ones who are actually very busy preparing for their marriage. You ask the board, it's okay lah, but they, they are always looking for okay lah. Eh? After all, on the, uh, on the wedding day, just go to the hand and come on the the girl, the ladies, you must go to the uh, salon, you must meet the uh, uh, someone who comes from. So, when they must have their own uh, uh, plans and calls, but she was prepared to sacrifice everything, you know, obedience. Are you prepared to sacrifice your friends? Are you prepared to surrender your friends to God? And say, God, I surrender myself. Use me even as you use Joseph and Mary. That accomplish your plan for the redemption of our mankind. God has a plan for each one of us. If we obey, we obey. It's one thing to know. It's that kind of thing to obey. We all know great life is must stop. Sure. But sometimes it's very hard for us to obey. Double line can hold it. We hold it. Yellow line cannot pass. We pass. Sure. These are all some of this actually the, the rebellious spirit in us. Right? Actually, the rebellious spirit. So we must uh, ask of God, give us strength to be obedient. It is only when we are obedient to the world. It is only when we uh, submit ourselves to uh, God the Holy Spirit. It is only when we say, God, use me as an instrument in your hand. Will we be able to make an impact on the society around us? I always tell myself, the church is the light. The church is the uh, soul. If the moral the, the, the morality of the society is going down. It is not the politicians who are responsible. We blame the politicians for all this uh, moral decay. It is not the politicians. It is the church. When the church becomes corrupt, when the church becomes disobedient to the word of God, when the church decides to do what he wants to do and not what God wants to do, the moral uh, standard of the society will go down. But you can make the difference. As an individual, don't worry about Peter, James, and John. Uh, Alicia, be a good girl. Obedient. Uh, there's a nice song. Uh, nice uh, uh, song. Uh, you, see, you may have heard this song. It's a beautiful Sunday school song. Uh, Jesus bids us shine with us all clear. Jesus makes a shine with a small candle Like a little candle burning in the night In this world of darkness, so we must shine You in your small corner and I in mine That's all. Yes, you shine when you God is with you Obey God and shine when God is with you And I will obey God and shine when God is with you and we will make this world a better, a beautiful place to live in. Let us be obedient, like yourself and Mary, even as we celebrate this time. God bless you.